Hello Crafty Family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY projects, we'll be creating some easy Christmas home decor using Dollar Tree supplies. Now to get you all started, I have included the full supply list with the links in the description box below. Now to all of my amazing subscribers and visitors, I wanted to say hey, hey, and if you have not subscribed yet, you definitely should so you can be the first to see hundreds of fresh and original craft ideas on my channel. So let's jump in and get started. Now this project is a rustic sconce lantern. We're gonna need one of these distressed boards from the Dollar Tree in the crafter square section. And I'm gonna need two of these red holiday lanterns from the Dollar Tree. Now I'm gonna start off with the board and what we wanna do is cut off that star portion. So I'm taking my ruler and my little cutting mat and I'm gonna draw a line directly underneath the star as straight as possible. Now to cut these are really easy. All you have to use is a utility blade. You can get these from the Dollar Tree and if you score it three or four times, that top piece will come right off and now you have one solid board. So now what we need to do is take that remainder of the board and divide it in half. Now my board ended up being just a little over 18 inches, so we're just gonna divide this directly in half right down the middle. And we're gonna score that a few times, and now once we do that, we'll have two boards that we're gonna use for our sconces. So here are our boards ready to go. And what we need to do now is mark the point where we want our hook to be. So I'm measuring down two and one quarter of an inch from the top of the board and then marking the center of the board, meeting it at that mark right in the center. Now I'm just double checking to make sure that hole is, you know, that mark is right in the center because we will be drilling a hole there later. Now I'm going to work with both of my boards at once. So I'm going to tape them together and then I am going to be drilling a hole through the middle. Now I wanted to screw in my hook. You can definitely use an adhesive hook or use a high uh, capacity glue such as E6000 or Gorilla Glue. Um, you don't have to screw it but I love my projects to be sturdy and long lasting so I am going to screw my hooks in. So once I drilled that hole right through the board what I'm going to do to make my hooks I'm using four tumbling tower blocks and two little wood beads. You can get both of these things from the Dollar Tree. Now to make the hook, I'm gonna stack two of the tumbling tower blocks together and I am just gonna glue them. And when you glue them, just make sure you wipe away all of that hot glue that oozes out of the seams. We're gonna do this for both sets. Now once you do that, now all you have to do is take one of the wood beads and put it at the top at the end of the bead. Uh, of the wood piece. So as you can see here, add a generous amount of that glue and set it right at the end here. And this is just a latch to keep your lanterns from slipping off your hook. Now I'm adding a little bead of hot glue to the very top covering that hole too. So once we paint it, you won't notice the hole on top. Now to paint these, I am gonna use just some standard white acrylic paint. You can definitely use chalk paint or spray paint or whatever paint that you love. And I'm just gonna apply that paint nice and even all over the piece. There's no need to put it on the back end, but you do wanna cover both of them in two coats. Now once they've, they have sat to dry, here they are ready to go. So now it's time to attach them to the board. So where we're gonna attach them is right over the hole that we drilled. So I'm just gonna apply some hot glue over that hole and then I'm gonna take my hook piece and then just place it right over the hole. You wanna make sure this is absolutely centered on that hole. Now wipe away all that hot glue if it may have oozed out of that seam. And then we're gonna repeat this for the other board. And now both of the boards have that hook in place. Now these are holding lightweight lanterns and this should be okay, but I'm gonna screw mine in. So I'm going back in with my drill just to get a pilot hole down into that wood stem we just added on the other side. Now the screws I'm gonna be using to attach this are just some simple number six, three quarter of an inch wood screws. And then I'm just gonna screw in through the back into that wood hook piece on the front. And now that piece is nice and sturdy and secured in place. 
Now on the back to hang these, it's really simple. I'm just gonna take some of this thick jute twine and I am just going to place it along the top edge of the lantern um, or the sconce probably about a half an inch from the top and you want to stretch this really taut when you apply it to the back now once those two ends are secured I'm taking some white cardstock adding some hot glue to that and covering the ends of the jute twine now not only does this give it extra security but it does finish off the look where you don't see the loose ends of the jute twine and it gives it a more professional look now we're gonna do this for both of the pieces and here is our hang string in place so now what we're going to do is decorate the top of our sconce and I intended to use these for the holiday so I'm going to add some holiday decor to the top. I have some pine pieces, berry pieces and some pine cones and I'm just coordinating them together in a little bundle so I can put it at the top of my lantern. I'm just going to hot glue all of these pieces together. Here are my two bundles, really cute and now I can apply those. So I'm just going to apply one at the very top right above the hook and I'm going to just apply these with hot glue. So I'm just putting a dab of hot glue there and hot gluing it right up there at the top. Now you're going to do this for both of your lanterns and now you have your decorative piece right up top. So now you can go ahead and grab those lanterns. I think these lanterns are so adorable. They have a little rustic look to them and the little windows that have a shimmery look. I really love these. The Dollar Tree has really stepped up their game this year. So I'm just going to take the hook of that lantern and hook it over our hooks. And there you have it. You have a lantern display sconce. It's really cute. And as you can see, the little lights, you could turn on and off if you like to, but I think these are adorable. And here are my lanterns all hung up and on display. I love these. Now I do think that these are very adorable and I really love using these distressed boards from the Dollar Tree to create these. Now you just add a little bit of greenery to top it off and you have a gorgeous lantern piece. Let me know what you think of this project in the comments below. Now this project is a set of candle decor holders. Now we're going to need two of these fall metal candle holders from the Dollar Tree. Now what we're going to do with these holders is first I'm going to go ahead and remove all of the stickers and labels from the bottom, make sure they are nice and clean, and then take them out to give them a couple coats of this white satin, bright white spray paint by Krylon. Now here they are, all nice and painted and dry, and now we can start to decorate them. So what I have is some of these uh, wired berry stems. You can get these from the Dollar Tree. And what I'm going to do is I am going to decorate around the bottom of these. Now I'm not going to glue them. I'm just kind of intertwining that wire around the pieces. And I'm going to wrap each piece around two or three times and then secure it in place with the wire. And that'll trim out the bottom. Just repeat this for the other one until both of those are done. And what I wanted to do is go ahead and grab some flocked trees that I got from the Dollar Tree, some uh, fairy lights on the Dollar Tree, and I made a couple of little stands out of tumbling tower blocks that I keep on hand for all of my projects. So what I'm going to do is unwind those fairy lights and what I want to do is start winding it around the flocked trees. So I'm just going to wind it around two or three times around the flocked trees just to kind of distribute those lights all through there. You only want to use about half of the lighting strip. Now for the remainder of the lighting strip you're going to take the little supporting box that your tree will be sitting on and I'm just going to wrap that around. Now I made this box really simple. It's only 12 blocks, three on each side. Side. so it's really simple it's just a little supportive box so once you wrap your lights around the box place the um, the little power box in the back where you can't see it and sit your tree on top of the supporting box and now you have a lighted tree stand I think that is so gorgeous if you do that uh, with this project now there is another way you could decorate these as well. I saw these red candles at the Dollar Tree. These are LED candles. I've never seen them in red so I saw those. I grabbed some greenery from the Dollar Tree and you could make a candle stand as well. 
So what I did is I put both of these ideas together and here is the trees. Oh my gosh, I love how these trees turned out. Now, when you put these all together, these lighted trees look so warm and I love the glow of these. These flock trees are so awesome. I'm so glad I found a project to create with them and adding the lights to the base really just sets it off and would look amazing with the lights dimmed. Now, I did mention you could use candles as well and here it is all put together. Now I'm so glad that I did grab those holiday red candles and some berry greenery from the Dollar Tree and I love how it pops against this little white holder. Now I hope that you give these easy DIYs a try. Now this project is a rustic framed holiday gift bag decor piece. Now I'm going to use one of these gift bags from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to need some foam board. You can use black or white from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to need four of the five gallon stir sticks. And I got these from Walmart for 94 cents on a three pack. So what I'm going to use for all four, I'm going to cut two at 15 inches and I'm going to cut two at 17 and a quarter inches. Now I'm going to set those to the side and then I'm just going to cut out my gift bag design. So on one of the sides, I'm just cutting right along that natural seam and carefully cutting it out. And here is the design I wanted to use for my framed piece. Now it does overlap at the top. I'm going to go ahead and trim that off as well so we don't have any unnecessary bulk in our finished piece. So once we have it all trimmed down and ready to go, I'm just once again going to lay out my pieces to make sure that they all fit correctly. And here it is, they're all laid out, everything looks good. So now just go ahead and put your print, um, your print design to the side. And now I'm going to paint these sticks. Now you can definitely stain or whatever you like, but I'm going to paint them because I wanted them to be that rustic white color like my board. So I'm using some white acrylic paint and I'm first going to just put in one nice coat all over the craft sticks on one side. Here are all four of them. Let them sit to completely dry. And now what I'm going to do is go in with some brown. This is called Melted Chocolate. It's called by Apple Barrel. And I'm going to give it just a light of distressing to kind of match the theme of these DIYs. And I'm going to use my craft stick technique. So what I like to do is take my craft stick and I'll dip it into the paint and I'll dab off most of the, um, the wet part of the um, paint. And I'm going to drag that craft stick along the edge of my paint stick and what this does this applies the a perfect amount of distressing not too much not too little just a perfect amount to make you happy and I'm just dragging it along the edge just making my wood look a little bit beat up and aged giving it that rustic appeal and then once I get the edges I'm just going to just take a little bit more paint and I'm going to drag that craft stick across the surface of each one of those paint sticks and again this this is all random. You can choose to distress or not. You just do whatever makes your heart happy. And I'm just going to apply just a little bit of distressing on the top edge just to look like a normal and natural distressing of the wood as if it is old and aged. Now here are all of my pieces all nice and dry. So what I'm doing now is I am assembling my frame. So what I'm going to do is the two longer sides are sandwiched in between the two shorter sides. So what I'm going to do is apply them together as shown here. I'm putting just the smallest bit of hot glue along the edge where the corners meet because it is a thin edge. I'm going to do this on starting on the two ends of one side of the frame. Now, once those two ends are there, I am immediately going to follow up with some staples. I have my staple gun, him with, staple gun here with some short staples, and I'm putting two staples on each end in the seam. Now, I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to add that other stick in between and glue it and staple that one as well. Now here is my frame all nice and assembled. I'm loving how this looks. It's perfect. And now we can work on getting our backboard for our project. So I'm going to grab that foam board. I'm going to lay my frame on top. I'm going to trace the outside edge of my frame onto the foam board. 
And then once I do that, I'm going to take my utility blade and then I'm just going to score that foam board and separate the piece the size of my frame. Now, I did want the backboard smaller than my frame because I didn't want to see it poking out from the sides. So what I like to do is trim off a half inch on the shorter side and a half inch on one of the longer sides. And this will make it sit just short of the edge of the frame where you don't see it in your final project, giving it a very neat appearance. So once that's done, go ahead and grab your gift bag print and we're just going to center it right in the center of your foam gore. This is very important. You wanna make sure it's sitting right in the center. Now once it's centered, I'm going to use just a standard school glue stick to apply this. I find this method the easiest because it has no bubbling or wrinkling when you apply it. So I'm just going to apply a generous amount of that glue stick and I'm going to apply it in sections at a time and then smooth it out with my hand as I go. And then I'm going to peel it back and apply another big section of that glue. I love working with these glue sticks and with, whether it's with these gift bags or calendars. I never have any bubbling or ripping, rippling with these. So this is my go-to when working with applying these sheets of paper, craft paper or scrapbook paper. So once it's all smooth and applied, I can grab my frame. Now what I'm doing is kind of situating it on top of the artwork, getting an idea of where I need to place it once I put my adhesive on the back of the frame. So once I'm comfortable, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding my hot glue around the back of the frame along the edge. And then carefully and slowly place it on your artwork. And then once it's in place, just press it all the way around. And here it is, all nice and framed. It looks perfect. So now what we're going to do is flip it over to the back and we are gonna add another hang string. This is just a double piece of jute. And now again, I'm gonna hot glue the ends as shown here, making sure it's a straight, taut piece of jute. And then I'm gonna cover those ends up with some black cardstock or black foam sheet, whatever you have. You could use felt. You just wanna make sure that you cover those ends for reinforcement and to make it look clean and professional. So once that's hot glued into place, you have a nice sturdy hang string that you can hang your piece up with. And check it out. You look, I love how this one turned out. Now framing the gift bags at the Dollar Tree is one of my favorite things to do and you can really recreate some beautiful pieces that look like store-bought artwork. Now I do think that this design is gorgeous. I love this bag with the bulb and the pine cone, so sweet. And that last touch with the distressed frame ties everything together. I hope you all choose some bags to frame for your space too. Now this project is a hobnail style holiday vase set. We're going to need two of these raised dot glasses from the Dollar Tree. Now what I'm going to do with my glasses is I'm going to go ahead and remove the stickers. You want to make sure that they are nice and clean. And then I'm going to take it out and give it a couple of coats of my Krylon Satin Bright White spray paint. Now here are the vases all painted, you guys. Don't these look gorgeous? I thought about distressing these, but I think these look so gorgeous in solid white, so I left them that way for my project. So I have some bulb, pine cone, and greenery bundles here that I glued to a piece of burlap ribbon. This, just use some Dollar Tree bulbs, greenery, and pine cones. You could put this together so really quick, and I just had these sitting to the side. So I'm tying this around the center of my vase as an accent. I love how this looks looks. We're going to do this for both of those faces. Here they are with that attached. Now I think that these look gorgeous just like this. You don't really need to do much more with them, but I decided to add some filler. You can add any filler that you want to. I have some berry bundles from the Dollar Tree and I have some pine greenery that I had that I had spray painted to look like it had a little frost on it. So you can add those in combination in your vase. So what I did is I took a bunch of that greenery and I stuck it in 
in the vase and then what I did is I cut all my berries off the stem and I put them in the vase and just kind of just shuffled them around I love the accent with the snowy pine and the berries I think that looks gorgeous and here are what they both look like you guys and there you have it two simple and sweet vases to grace your decor now I really do love the vibrant red colors of the holiday and I'm so glad that the Dollar Tree had those berries in stock to make this all come together. Now you guys, these DIYs were so fun to create today and I hope that I have inspired you to get creative. Now I really do love each of these, but let me know in the comments which one is your favorite today. Listen, if you love DIYs on a budget, please give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She's So Crafty EE on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest for the latest news, sneak peeks, and giveaways. Now, don't forget, make sure you're subscribed by clicking that subscribe button below or just click on my She's So Crafty logo on your screen and make sure you hit that bell to be notified when the next DIY goes live. It doesn't cost a thing. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time.